I am going to show you my men's makeup basics today because it's something I have done quite a bit of and I feel like there's just not a lot of content out there on YouTube when you are looking to know how do you do a man's makeup for on-camera work. So this is not transformative makeup. This makeup is meant to still maintain a male appearance for TV, film, print work, on-camera work for male talent. To begin any men's makeup application, I will hydrate their skin just as I would with any client, but I'm going to use a matte moisturizer. Most of the time for camera work, you are not going to want anything dewy or super hydrated looking. So I'm using the Pop Beauty Supreme C Cream. I love that one and I also love Embryolisse Hydra Matte. Either one gives hydration, but keeps the finish matte. We of course want to hydrate the lips. Here's another situation where we want to keep the hydration matte. So I'm using Burt's Bees, just the standard peppermint lip balm because I have found this is the perfect texture due to its beeswax. It hydrates, but the finish is matte. You definitely don't want glossy lips. Um, that's usually not the look for camera work. I like to color correct when I'm doing men's makeup because this almost always allows me to use less product in the end for coverage. So I'm toning down the redness in Preston's skin by mixing a green color corrector into my RCMA foundation. The green color corrector is from the Temp2 adjuster wheel and I am just spotting that on the reddest areas. He is using a prescription skincare that is going to make his surface tone of his face more red than the yellow undertone of his body. So that's why it's important to cancel out this redness because that is not his true undertone. Aside from using green to cancel out redness, you may also need to use a peachy apricot salmon color on the darkness under the eyes if needed. I did not have to today with Preston. I just went right in with concealer because he didn't really have significant under eye darkness. But if you do, you will color correct before concealing, just as we did with the redness. I'm using the Glossier Stretch Concealer under Preston's eyes because I do want to brighten a little bit up under here. Almost everyone has a little bit of darkness. Nobody is probably sleeping that eight hours a night. So brightening up, and I love this because like the RCMA foundation, it's very skin-like. It does not read like a dry matte concealer the way some of the liquid formulas do. So I have found surprisingly that Glossier Stretch Concealer is excellent for men's makeup. I am using both foundation and concealer for Preston. I am using them for coverage, for brightening, for evening out. You may only need concealer on some people. You may need only foundation. A lot of foundations such as the RCMA one you can use as concealer as well. So you will want to have both. You may grab both one or the other, just you never know what you may end up needing until you see the skin up close and see what needs covered and how. This is my favorite foundation. It was formulated for camera work. So it looks like skin on, on camera, which is what it's all about, especially with men's makeup. And I find that I am able to get the right amount of coverage, but keep the skin looking real and not have to go in with a powder foundation. I just really don't like them and I tried to make them work for men for a while and then I just gave up because I realized it still looked makeup-y. And I think that's kind of the number one rule with men's grooming, um, don't make it look makeup-y. When I apply the RCMA foundation, I do not use any thinners or anything. You can if you don't need as much coverage, but I'm just using it straight in its cream format and I'm using a synthetic brush to dot it where I need it and buff it out. I know it probably seems crazy to do a full face of foundation on a male client, but the goal is to make his face and body the same tone to cancel out redness, blemishes, discoloration, and this is how we're going to achieve that. One area I want to make sure that you don't ignore is the ears. Now, ears are almost always going to look more red next to the face tone because they're more vascular. You know, they have a lot of blood flow in there. So I do take what's left over on my brush and bring it onto the ears just to keep this 
looking as non makeup -y as possible. I think that's a telltale sign if you've got this perfect skin next to this very red ear, the tones don't match, so don't forget about those ears on your guys. When it's time to powder, I am going to go in with a translucent setting powder. I'm using the RCMA No Color Powder, so that means it has no color pigment in it. I already used the RCMA foundation for my coverage, and I'm not going to put a colored powder on top of that, creating a new skin tone and then more makeup appearance. That's why I like a translucent powder for this. If you're working on someone with a deeper skin tone, you likely will want to use a powder with a little bit of tone in it. So you may reach for your banana powders, your more kind of ochre topaz type of setting powders on those deeper skin tones that may need a little bit of the brightening effect as well. I'm setting his makeup so it stays on throughout his photo shoot, but I'm also using it to mattify. So if there is any excess shine on the skin, I'm taking that out. So eyebrows almost always need brushed up with a clear brow gel just to make sure all the hairs are laying in their place and not getting too wild looking, especially your older male clients. They may have some pretty crazy eyebrows. Um, you may need to trim their brows occasionally. If someone has facial hair, you may want to use a brow powder to fill in any little patches where hair is not growing, make it look like their beard is a little fuller, a little crisper on the edge. So fill in as needed with brow powder if someone does have facial hair. Clear brow gel works for most, but I do also like Glossier Boy Brow, which is a tinted brow gel to help to kind of fill in any spots that are sparse in somebody's brow or to cover gray hairs. So I am using the Glossier Boy Brow in black on Preston just to show you what that looks like. I'm going to use a setting spray to both set the makeup and then kind of help to mesh all the layers of makeup together as one. I feel like setting spray does both of those things and it will also prevent transfer to clothing Thank you so much for watching this video and thank you to Preston for being an excellent model for this tutorial. I certainly hope this has helped you, made you feel a little bit more prepared. If you do still have questions, of course, leave them below and I will be linking all of the products that I used on Preston in this demonstration in the description bar below.